Ladies and gentlemen, in this episode today, we're going to look at some frogmen, we're going to look at some mud masters, we're going to look at some kings, some digital squares, and we're going to start the hunt for some range mans. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. I'm Matthew Hardman, the G-Shock Watcher, and we're about to take the tour on the BuyE website to see if there are any bargains that we can hunt down. And good news is there are some pretty cool bargains out there. There's some watches which are typically at their original price over $1,000, which I've seen some discounts up to 80%. Um, this is part of the auction process. Of course, as it gets closer to the end date, those prices could escalate fairly quickly. Um, but it's always good to be able to go and actually check some of those out. Uh, one of the things I heard feedback on from somebody this week was they'd love to be able to understand a little bit more about range mans and perhaps do something similar to what we did before with the GA2100 retrospective, do the same thing on range man. And to be honest, I don't actually own a range man. And so I started to have a look at that on the buy website and found some interesting ones there, but we'll come to that. The other thing that I wanted to have a look at again is also uh, another G-Shock King. Uh, it was fairly divisive, divisive, decisive, different strong opinions on the latest mod that we did on the G-Shock to take the G-Shock watch that had the kind of fluorescent colors and then apply a steel mod to that, which was also kind of fluorescent and oily colored. Some people loved it, some people hated it. I don't think anybody said it was okay. Uh, my son loved it. He kind of took it. Oh, I gave it to him. Um, and we're yet to sort of see if he wears it enough or not. But hey, he liked the watch. He went ahead and actually took it. So let's get started. I've got a whole list of different watches that we can go ahead and actually jump into in this episode. And I'm going to start with a interesting one. This is a G-Shock uh, cockpit series, a Skymaster. It's a GW 4001A3 made in 2012. This one right now is about six hours left on the actual auction. Um, so not a lot of time left. And hopefully by the time this video comes out, there will still be some time to bid on it if you're interested in it. Um, but certainly something interesting to look. It's very bright and very green or black on green. I think the, the color combination here is kind of unique with that sort of very bold green accent on the actual black watch. This watch itself came out sometime around 2012. The price right now is 16,000 yen, so it's close to $150 sing. So maybe uh, my exchange rates are pretty bad, maybe $120 US. The original price of this watch was around 40,000 yen. So right now you're getting this watch at about 60% off of what the original price was. Granted, it was back in 2012, so it's a 12 year old watch. But as you can sort of see, when we jump into the, the details, multi-band six, tough solar, interesting, interesting watch. It's definitely gonna have some wear, right? I mean, it's an older watch, but definitely an interesting one to go ahead and actually look at. So not a bad watch to, to go ahead and actually start. I kind of like that, that black and green. The next one I want to go take a look at, and this is where I was sort of saying I want to sort of get back into potentially looking at uh, a king watch, is this one here. This is a, uh, a let me see, GXW56. This was a watch built in 2010, tough solar, um, multi band six, really solid watch. Like this is the one I went ahead and actually modified recently. And like I sort of said, I had fun modifying the actual watch itself, but the watch, when it came, the actual watch by itself in its resin band is super comfortable. It's a big watch. Make no mistake, it's up there in the sizes of the Mudmasters and, and those sorts of chunky watches, but it's a really, really nice watch. And what's nice about this particular one is the fact that your display here is positive. It's not the in a negative display where you kind of got the black and with the, the numbers coming through on the uh, um, the positive. I kind of like this from a clarity point of view. Again, 
partially because I'm probably getting older, so I've got glasses on as I go ahead and actually have a look at these watches. But it's a nice, uh, nice watch. And like I sort of say, it's a big watch, but it's very, very comfortable. The other one that I saw in that same sort of range, another King, um, this one was a negative display, but very bold on the actual colors. As you can sort of see here, it's got the red and the black as well. Um, so interesting, interesting watch to be able to go ahead and actually look at. This one went for, uh, when it came out, for 29700 Its current price is about seven seven fifty, So that's saving 74% on the actual watch. The the other one that we have here, this one is at 14,000 and at that price it's about a 50% saving. So pretty decent on uh, on both watches there that that uh, that can go ahead and actually be utilized. So um, if you're into the Kings, it's it's not a terrible watch to be able to go ahead and actually hunt down. Like I say, it feels very comfortable. It's very very solid. I like that positive display one because it's super easy to read. You've got all the time zones. It's a it's a nice chunky watch. Um, let's go back. There's a couple of other ones which I want to sort of talk through. Uh, there was a G Steel black and gold, which I thought was interesting to go ahead and actually look at as well. So this one, it's a nice looking watch. Um, so right now, it's pretty much all wrapped up. I don't know how much it's been utilized, but it looks fairly new in the box. This is a G Steel, I think. It's the, the number is a GST. So I think this is a G Steel, right? It's a, it's a G Steel watch. But this one here is a black and gold G Steel watch. Very, very nice, elegant, almost looking watch uh, for that, uh, that sort of style. Um, tough solar, uh, nice sort of look about it. This watch came out in 2022. It retailed back then for 57,200 yen. It's currently priced at around about 31,500 yen. So that's about a 45% savings. Interesting watch to, to be able to go ahead and actually check out. Uh, you know, not something I'm going to go ahead and actually buy, but certainly if you want something a little bit more understated, something a little bit more classy. Not a bad watch to be able to go ahead and actually look at, especially, I guess, when you're drinking your martinis and you want to look cool. And that is an awesome martini. It's a passion fruit martini, by the way. So, not okay, so here's one I'm actually pretty excited about. It's a digital square. Now, this particular watch is not cheap, right? This watch itself right now is going for 28,500 yen. And that's not the fact that it's not cheap. Many digital squares that you can grab a hold of, some of them are around about, you know, 19,000 yen, about 100 bucks. They're not super expensive. This one is a 28,500 28, yen, so $263 sing. Here's the thing. This particular watch at retail, when it came out, it actually costs around about 198,000 yen. It's not cheap. It's a special edition type watch, um, which which is basically a titanium edition. It's kind of like a mech type edition. If you look at the, the details on this thing, it's kind of got some interesting aspects on the actual band itself. Let's see if we can sort of see that. The pictures don't do justice, but this particular watch, you can potentially see a little bit of the red, but you can see on the band and the casing, it is a little bit more different than your typical digital square. Um, and what this is, is a titanium band on a digital square um, with a, a red accent. It's a pretty cool watch. Like I say, it usually retails for around about 198,000 yen, but its current price is 28,500 yen. That is an 86% saving on the original. It's basically nicknamed the Titanium Virtual Armor. That's the TVA uh, specification on the actual watch itself. So interesting watch from uh, from that point of view. So if you're interested, two days remaining, something you could go ahead and actually jump into. Um, last couple of watches we're going to touch on on buy, which are interesting at the moment. Um, there's a nice Mudmaster watch. 
Uh, Mudmaster, again, if you wanted a really rock solid watch to really knock around in, um, there's a couple of Mudmasters. This one here is a GWG 100 G-Shock Master. It's currently going for 263. Um, it normally retails for 49.5. So it's just under 50% savings from that point of view. The other one is a more modern one that, uh, that kind of has taken a fancy of people. This one has that sort of green khaki flagship sort of look. This one's going for 30,222 yen. Its original price is 121,000 yen. So the discount right now is at 75%. This is a pretty cool watch at that particular price. Um, so definitely something to worth uh, uh, chasing down from that point of view. Last couple I want to talk about, Frogmans. I love Frogmans. It's still for me an aspirational watch, especially those collector ones that are $10,000. I'd love to be able to own one. I love the yellow black. Um, but there are many different uh, Frogmans that are out there. There's some higher-end ones and some mid-range ones. Um, some of the, the mid-range ones here, uh, if I go through and actually have a look at our list, uh, let's have a look. This one here, which we're going to load up, this one I love. This has a really, really nice color scheme. It's the, the black on the red, uh, red Frogman. It's not heavily discounted. Uh, this watch came out in 2020. It's probably playing more on the fact that it's harder to get. Um, its original pricing was around about 99,000 yen. It's now 92,000 yen. So the savings about 7%. Uh, but it could be one of those watches which is hard to be able to go ahead and actually find. If you're searching for a specific Frogman and wanted that look and appeal, it could be a good one to go ahead and actually look for, but but difficult to, uh, to find. One of the other ones in that same sort of Frogman category, which is probably a little bit more accessible, is this particular one, Master of G Frogman. It's more the traditional sort of style, the, the dark blue with the silver. This one's gone for 31,000 yen. Its typical price is around about 105,000 yen. So more, more than the actual red Frogman, which again, the red Frogman I think is a little bit harder to get, but this one is the sort of more current version. 105,000 yen, the savings pretty good. The savings to get on this watch, if you got it for 31,000 yen, you'd be saving around about 71%. So not bad at all from a savings angle. The other one, or the last one here in terms of Frogman, this is more the digital Frogman. Those previous two were analogs. This is a digital one. This is a uh, an anniversary edition, 30th anniversary. Um, this one's interesting. The savings about 25%. It's currently going for 57,421 yen, but its original price is 77,000. I think this sort of appeals to somebody who really, really likes Frogman. I like Frogman, but I would like it in that sort of more modern analog uh, style watch. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, it's a personal taste. You could go after this one, but not really for me so much. Last couple of quickly I want to touch on. We have an MRG, which looks interesting. Um, the MRGs, you know, are the highest end watches. This one is a MRG um, Zone. I don't know if I'm saying that one right. It's a nice watch. It kind of has the black and red and gold accents to it. Again, MRG, top, top, top range MRG. This one was released in 2017. Its retail price was 330,000 yen, 330,000 yen, so fairly pricey. It's currently priced at 81,000 yen. So that is a saving of 75%. So if you wanted to pick up an MRG and you were able to say, you know what, I can go to about $1,000, this is not a bad purchase. Five days remaining, I guarantee the price will go up because it is an MRG, it's pretty exciting for people, it'll go up from that point of view. Um, there was an MRG, which also looked interesting, um, but look, I'll show it to you. I would say it looks a little bit heavily damaged. I wouldn't necessarily advocate for this particular watch. It's a, um, they call it a rainbow blue Phoenix watch. Interesting, but not necessarily really what I would be looking after from that angle. So um, nice couple of watches there. That MRG, like I say, is an interesting one. The last two watches um, I wanna sort of quickly touch on 
uh, the range man. So I'm looking at the range mans now, and I found two which I thought were really interesting. Uh, this one starting off is a uh, camouflage edition range man. I've never really looked at these watches before, but when somebody pointed out to me, hey, you should do a retrospective on the range man, so I thought this is actually a pretty cool watch. And I, I looked at this one and found this particular one, which is a camouflage one. I kind of like the green and the orange accents. It's a, a very, very cool looking watch there. Um, Multi-band six, tough solar. You know, what's not to like about this particular watch? It's a, it's a pretty cool watch with the camo strap on it. Bit scratched up, but that's okay. It's weathered and worn. The other one, this one I kind of liked as well. Uh, and I started to bid for this particular watch. I'll tell you a story. I saw this one at a really cheap price. It was very, very cheap, and I thought, I've got to try and get into this one. It's actually, I don't know if it's limited edition. I guess it is. It's a special collaboration with the fire departments in uh, Japan, um, and it looked very, very cool. It's a collaboration model. It's a range man, and it's a collaboration model with the actual fire departments. Now, you can't sort of see too much, but it's got the reds and the blacks and the yellows there. Um, but when you look at the, the band, I love the multi-band there. It's got the Team for Disaster Response on there. Um, you can see the logos for the different areas. Very, very cool sort of watch. When I started to look at this watch, the original price was something like $40. I thought, wow, this is a steal. Started bidding, somebody priced higher, somebody priced higher. I got it to around about $80 sing. Um, so about, what is that, maybe 8,000 yen, I think it was. And then I woke up this morning and the bids were higher up again. And, you know, whoever has a, a repeatable bid in there, every time I bid, it's higher than what they actually had. Um, but I pushed it up to around about $250 and it's still uh, automatically bidding ahead of me. So I'll keep watch on this particular one. But I kind of like this range, man. Uh, it's a nice one. I'm going to go ahead and actually hunt these things down a little bit and, uh, and see if there's uh, uh, more which I can learn from this particular watch. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Like I say, quick short video talking about some of those deals on uh, G-Shock. I'll put the links to the watches in the description below, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and please like and subscribe and leave your comments. I'd love to be able to learn more about what you're looking at in G-Shocks and what you'd like to understand more about as well. Thanks for joining.